Welcome back, folks. I have to apologize for the lack of immediate video coverage on patch 1.5 on the common test server, mostly because it was tax season and I usually get stressed out, super stressed and anxious during tax season, so I hate it. But we're finally back, so for this video, we'll take a look at the top tier new Swedish medium tanks, the UDS 14, 15 and 16 or something like that. But we'll also take a look at the new hidden vehicles in the next video, which is the Jackson Chafee Hybrid, and then the AMX 13 Sherman Hybrid, and then the Skruda T27, which should be a normal tank, not the TVP VTU. Ugh, but you know, premiums are always better than the normal copies. <laughs> so surprisingly, we don't have the T116, which is the should be anniversary gift for Wargaming this year, coming in August. It's a Russian tier 3 premium light tank. It's like a small dust collecting light tank. It's a little bit fast, but whatever. And we don't have the newly introduced FV1066, the Simlac. It's a premium tier 8 British light tank. Has a very high penetration, high explosive shell, but yeah, that just came out on the super test, so we are not expecting it in this 1.5 patch very soon. So I'll give you guys all the details in the next video. But for this video, we'll take a look at the new UDS 15 slash 15 slash 16. La, 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 tongue twister. So I took a look at the stats. It has very high DPM <laughs> with the rammer, and it's relatively accurate, relatively and 2.11 seconds of aim time, which is pretty fast. Has a very high alpha for 105, so it gets boosted like with the uh, crab wagons, in a sense, but it takes longer to reload. So it's not exactly a STRV type of DPM, but 1388 is pretty goddamn high. <laughs> so if you take a look at the STRV, I'll remove the camo so we can compare the camo as well. But the STRV has 3,800, so it's obviously not STRV, but it has the benefit of a turret, so that's worth a lot. So, in sense, it's a comparison between a T110E4 and a T110E3, in a sense, hypothetically. But this thing also has the new hydro pneumatic suspension thingy magic, so technically it has better gun depression than the S tank. It has about like 14, 15 or so if you fully gun depress, but it does not say here. Maximum only 13. Oh well, my mistake. Alright, but I took a look at the other stats. It has actually the best camouflage rating without a camo net than the Vatrat and then the K91. So the K91 has already a decent camouflage rating. It's a sniping Russian medium tank with very high penetration, but this thing has better camouflage rating. Downside is it's not as accurate, <laughs> obviously. And DPM is about the same too, so that's kinda neat. 330 for the gold shell and 310. So gold shell might be a problem, but eh, it's a high explosive edit tank. You should not have that much problem. So let's take a look at the speed. So 50 kilometers per hour top speed, 24 in reverse. That's pretty decent. 18.77 for horsepower per time ratio. It's not as good as the K91. And top speed is not as good. So this thing is more stealthy, but it's slower in a sense. Has about the same DPM. Health wise, it's the same health. No. Oh. Still more than batch at so view range. I have coded optics, but uh, let's see if I put coded optics on the K91, would it be better? Uh, no, so it has the least view range. So the turret has only 390, whereas for the other stealthy light tanks or light tanks, stealthy light medium tanks, they have more view range 410 and 400. So yeah, it is kind of blind, but it is more stealthy, so that is the trade-off. So we're going to play a few games to see how this vehicle feels, but I'll cover the new hidden vehicles in the next episode, and we'll take a look at the new Crown Wagon, because that thing got buffed, 
So originally it had about 2,400 DPM for the crab walk-in. Now it has... I missed the... Oh, I took the gunner from this crew, but... Yeah, it has about 3,000 base now. Not including the gunner. The gunner could load that to like 3,000. Oh, let's just get a new gunner. Hold on. Uh, the Shiza. I took all the crews from somewhere. Recruit a gunner, 100%. Alright. Still. Oh, it doesn't have brothers in arms or sisters in arms. Crap! <laughs> Guess we'll figure that out when we go. Can I get a female crew? No, I can't. Oh! Still, that thing has like 3000 DPM now. So it's like a T57 heavy, in a sense. Wonderful. <laughs> so let's take a look at the UDS. 15 slash 16 and we'll probably suck with this vehicle, but I had a lot of fun with the STRVs Mostly with the S tanks. So I had S tank for a while. I put my female cruising there as well as the, with the crab wagon But I can tell you the S tank is very fun because of the freaking 4000 DPM you can crank out <laughs> It's only second to the, like the tortoise and the the badger but still it's a lot stealthier than a freaking badger and a lot faster all right let's try not to get killed but this thing has only 50 armor 50 millimeters of armor on the hull front mm. all right so we're top ugh, only top tier vehicles it is the test server there is no zoom mod there is a lag and uh uh, uh, that's pretty much it. <laughs> and there's no benefits of XVM stuff, so I kind of tell how much health everybody has or remaining health and other stuff, so... Yeah, I'm kind of relying on XVM stuff most of the time. Especially for the zoom mod, I can't even see. I mean, you would expect a gunner scope to be like 25x scope or something, but... Eh! I think the max is like what? Max is 25, okay. I, I would expect like 40x or something. Oh, fine. Uh, it's like a S tank in a sense, but... But you have some turret armor and a turret to go do other stuff. Huh. Oh, come on. That was not time. between the silos. TVP got a hit in. Now, would it be better to have a camouflage now on this thing? Which I... Now. Oh, ah, freaking... Squirrely. SOB. Oh, there's a... Unexpected backhead. Why would you do that? You're dead. You're a llama! You're supposed to be dead! A llama! Shoot that guy! Okay. You're supposed to be dead! Okay, side armor is obviously garbage. It's a forward mounted engine, so if you get hit in the front, and get pinned, you obviously will be catching on fire and getting engine damage. So that's also another downside for the forward mounted stuff. Oh, it's a buff crab wagon. That's not hold down. Come on! Alright, Lord Plate. It has a lot of DPM, but why does it feel so slow? Well, it is high alpha. I prefer... I don't know what I prefer. I prefer nothing! I prefer to camp in the back like a bitch! Well, it is a camping vehicle. So, there is still a slow startup to your speed. Like, if you get caught while gun depressing, it still takes like a half a second for you to go fully back to reversing. I think. I don't know. What the, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, Alright. 
I think we're Gucci on that front. Close enough. Are they going to push? Well, let's see how... Like, originally, slope armor will defeat a high explosive anti-tank shell, but they somehow changed it. Whereas, with the S-Tank nowadays, if you just jam a 122 high explosive AT shell, it pins. Just pins. So, where is our grill tank? Oh, he's gone. So it still takes a while for it to rev up, but there is a EBR somewhere. I wonder if the upper plate could defeat the 105 from the EBR. Guess we won't find out. Okay. It's slow. It's slower than the average medium tanks. It's like a pat in a sense of speed. I mean, it's average, but it's not going anywhere fast. Goodbye. <laughs> but, alright. It's it's a camping medium. It's like a K91. It's rear-mounted turret and with decent camo, so you camp in the back like a bitch. <laughs> and try snipe. Um, they added this thing with the UI stuff. So you want more? Get the new premium stuff for more credits. And yeah. Oh, fuck you. Alright, more shit. <laughs> so would you spend your time with this vehicle than with the crab wagon? I don't know. I mean, it's it's a gimmick in terms of the new gun depression, but I don't see it giving it a lot more benefit than having like just straight up more gun depression. Like just give it... Well, then again, it just breaks the turret if you think about it. It has to gun depress. So would it be better if you press a button for siege mode with the turret than without it? Well, then again, it doesn't work with the turret, because if you turn the turret, it turns the hull. So that goes away from the siege mode, right? Well, just buff the STB, please. The accuracy on that thing is garbage. Actually, dispersion on that thing is garbage. Accuracy is okay. But, like, dispersion while shooting during turret traverse is, like, insanely high. <laughs> it's even worse than the Grill 15 or something. I don't remember the stats. <laughs> um... I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this thing. It's uh, it's uh, maybe it has a if it if it has an auto loader that would be spicy of a meme. Maybe that would be interesting if it has an auto loader. I'm playing this thing like a S tank in a sense. I'm being passive about it, but uh, if it has an auto loader, maybe it'll be like a bad chat mixed with a K91. Maybe that would be interesting. There's still artillery in play, so we're not going to do stuff. 0 0.34 accuracy, bumped down to 0 0.32 with a good crew. And Burgess Yarn, the other stuff. So we'll take a second to take a look. EBR is spotted. EBR is dodging all the hits. Got took one. I got spotted. Reverse speed is also pretty decent. It's not as fast as STB's reverse speed, but hey, 24 is not nothing to scoff at. Go back up and I can shoot you. Get back up and I can shoot you. Get back up and I can shoot you. Oh, come on! I think I think I'll get spotted. Oh. Oh yeah, it's an EBR. They have terrible view range. That waste his repair kit for now. Um, we have the bunch of tank destroyers protecting the crowd box. That place is getting crowded. Conquer. So if you, I still think like after playing for forty thousand games and these past few years, I've been thinking that a Code Optic is a lot better than Vents now on medium tanks. You just don't want Vents anymore. Like, you could have Rammer, Vertical Stabilizer, and Code Optics. It would be a lot better than just having Rammer, Vertical Stabilizer, and uh, Vents. 
so... I don't know. Like, the changes with the vents to DPM to other stuff is so minute that you don't even need the vents anymore. It would be a lot better to have just a massive 10% boost to your view range than having a 5% boost to cruise scale which only boosts your view range by like 2% or something. Everybody's swarming there. Um, I still wish we have XVM stuff like the last spotted, uh, the the spotted icon for all the vehicles that were spotted, as well as their health. If you press the alt button, that's a common feature on XVM, which is very useful. But don't have it. All right, we have tank destroyers can be there. Two large FE4 double So we'll take our time. We'll take our time. And this thing gets nuked by stuff like that. Right, 430! Blaze it! <laughs> uh, it's a 440, so low alpha roll. Um, we have the field. There are a few large... Oh, I guess I have the spot for the heavies. Or the FE4004s. 4005. Holy oh, shit, I just died using the Right. Guess I'll weather the storm of whatever the hell's over here. Who killed the FE4005? I got spotted with something. Got the press. Oh yeah, the 4005 uh, got nerfed. You guys are still playing it? Interesting. We lost that area. Oof. How do I feel about the nerf for the 4005? I don't have one, I don't care. <laughs> uh, it's uh, it's way too easy. It's like a okay, okay. I expose AT side of the turret. It's, uh, oh, it's interesting. What the hell did I get hit by? Side of the turret. Oh, mantlet. Nice. Gold shell artillery. Pointless. <laughs> I showed you guys. Artillery gold shell is basically auto aim noob. I cannot help it. It's 89 damage. 89 whole damage. Alright. 4 double fives. Got his track. Got the engine deck. No! Mm -hmm. Let's see if the upper armor can bounce shots. Yep. I still take the tank. We're still in our tour range and there's a FP4005 behind us. Yeah, I'll push here into a freaking 60 TP, why not? The Sheridan has a 152. Oh, high to take. Let's see if I can bounce the high explosive. Oh, that's I'll crash him! Crash him! Sax him up! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> There's no gun sound. What the hell happened? Let's see if the upper. Is the oh, I cannot. <laughs> I want to see if the turret can bounce the 60 TP, but. <laughs> got nuked by FE4005. Sex him up! Hump him to death! 
Um, uh, well, it still has the feature of the S tank, which you're low. The vehicle is very low in terms of vehicle clearance, and it's a slope upper plate. So sometimes you become a ramp. And do dumb shit. Oh no. But. <laughs> oh god. Um, uh, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this thing. I mean, it's okay. In terms of a vehicle that you would want out of everything, it's it has the DPM, it has the accuracy, it has the camping aspect of a vehicle. So this thing will make vehicles like slow vehicles without V-range uh, pretty much a nightmare. Uh, pretty much a nightmare to drive because it's a camper. It's a camper like the S tanks. It's a camper like the K91 or the Bad Jet. But the balancing for this vehicle is it's not as fast as a Bad Jet or a K91 or a STRV S. Uh, 103, uh, 103, 103 something B, sure. <laughs> but it has the turret, so that's the benefit of playing this vehicle. I mean, I don't know how aggressive you could get with this thing. I couldn't test the turret, obviously, on the test server because every show is gold show, and I don't think it's an automatic bounce for the turret. I think it's relatively bouncy at a 200 meter distance minimum, but you cannot get more close to the enemy with your turret. I think it won't bounce as much. I don't know. I haven't tested this shit now. Ooh! This map with a camping tank that has a turret and without artillery means you can go over here and snipe at the heavies. We'll see how good this thing is, but I think out of a 10 scale, scale of 10 rating, it might be a. Uh, I say it might be an eight, eight point five. I mean, it's pretty decent. It has a lot of DPM and camouflage factor, which is good. And a uh, uh, gimmicky armor, which is also decent on a camping high DPM vehicle like the S tank. So, since I like the S tank, I'll give this an eight point five. If I don't have the S tank, if I don't have the crab wagon. Which one would I get first out of the three? Um, I would still get the S tank first because of you know historical significance. It just looks plain sexy. But this might be a second if they didn't buff the crab on it, but they did. So don't know how that thing is going to work out, but we won't go too far into the into the zone because if we get Swarmed will be will be served. Um, we'll just camp here for a while. Um, I want to be aggressive and test the armor, but it's a slope armor. And yeah, I got spotted. For sure, no problem. Can't hit through rocks, and there's no artillery, so wait for me. Yeah, it's ice I can! <laughs> you, so this is a plus from the S tank. You can side script with this thing and do tricky shots. Trick shots. We have heavy tanks camping that corner. We should be good. Push up. E5 push up. I'll shoot you. Actually, they, they won't. Let's go towards the other rock. Welcome to the rock. All right, 60 TP. Yeah. It still packs a wall above a punch. Oh, I got spot. By the E5. Got him. You still get, yeah. One upside of playing with a turreted vehicle is you can side scrape, which is very important. Side scrape does not allow you to expose the upper parts of your vehicle. Oh shit! Like with the S tank, I have to fully 
expose the front of my vehicle hull with side scraping. I don't know. Uh, zoom mod is very important. You cannot penetrate the turret. You can penetrate up, but ah, oh, bounced a high explosive AT shell from a 705. 705. Now, obviously, I'm not going to be a side scraping battle against a freaking heavy tank designed for side scraping. So. Another hike, so a T show. This way, I'm I'm stopping the the flanking on my heavies for a while, so that prevents the 705A from going around the corner. But let's try with the hike, so it's a tank show, which I don't think will hit. Got my tracks. Side scrape tracks ate it. Jammy to his turret. Yeah, okay. Oh, Grill's dead? Grill is dead. Nice. So, side scraping. Oh, shoot. Does he see me? Maybe he does. Don't take your attention away from me! Oh shit, I missed. <laughs> Try to jam one to his turret side. Oh. Back to APCR shell. It takes a while to reload. Oh. Yeah. It takes a while. Alright, just prevent the heavy tanks from being flanked and we'll be fine. A little bit worried about the FE4005 though. And uh, the the beach has fallen. Guys, you are all rushing that area. What the hell happened? Oh, Alright, turn front towards. Yes, gold shell block. Or what? Something block. APCR. Just get into this position. No. Side scrape still works. Ooh. There's the big one. There comes the big one. Oh, how the hell did that hit? Oh, into the engine deck? Interesting. I'm trying to see which sides I can block. Ah! So if you go a little bit higher on a reverse slope, it can actually pin through the side of your vehicle's hull. So what I mean is, like, get off the screen. So what I mean is, like once you side scrape like this, they can aim at this part of the engine deck. So this will pin, and this decrease the angling of your turret. So you cannot go down on a reverse slope and expect to bounce a lot of shots. The tracks was eating the high explosive anti-tank shells from the previous uh, heavy tanks, so I still bounce <laughs> 2,000 damage. <laughs> what the hell happened to the heavy tanks? You were all camping this corner, and you all got slaughtered. <laughs> Let's see, 54. Jesus! Like, why were you go? Oh yeah, they were shot by the FE4005 from this corner. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but overall, I would still prefer the S tank, the 103B, to this thing in terms of raw DPM. But uh, like between this and the Crown Wagon and the S tank, I would think. Oh, actually, it's between this and the Crown Wagon. Uh, cram wagon because uh, the cram wagon is closest to the Leo. So if you're playing the Leo, which vehicle would you go down? 
I would suspect I would suspect you go down the it's hard to choose like uh, go, go to the tech tree mm. I mean in mill one basically originally it was OP they nerfed it it's still decent I played it I liked it I kept mine and um oh no like would you play well the UDS 14 alt 5 has 23 horsepower per time wow let's see uh maybe this thing will be pretty good in front lines so yeah if you're playing front lines I would suspect this thing to be a lot better than the mill when it comes to front lines and front line is a thing if you want to get the tier 9 vehicle so once you get the uh, alt 14 uh, once you get the top engine and tracks and other stuff let's see weighs more yeah 105 um, I would rather use the 105 mostly because of the pen so this thing uh, what the hell there you go that's the top gun Oh, the turret is only 66. It's not well sloped. It's basically flat. So this thing doesn't have that good of an armor. So in general, this thing is more like a sniping medium tank. But is it worth it to play this thing in front lines than the Emil? Emil 1. How much camo? It's relatively stealthy, like a K91 in a sense. Yeah, I think this would think this thing would be better than the mill. The mill one is okay when it comes to like defending or getting a hilltop, and yeah, you have the gun depression and the other stuff. But in overall, like if you want to snipe and camp and do all this stuff, I think the UDS 14 Alt 5 would be better at front lines. So it has 25 horsepower per time ratio, and it's relatively fast, quick to turn. Accuracy is okay. It's not bad. It's not great. Health is decent. 1400 health. That is chunky for a medium. Like for a vehicle without armor, I think this thing should get like 1200 health or 1300. But that is a that is uh, leaning towards higher end of health spectrum, close to a heavy. So 390 meters of base view range. What the shit? <laughs> You don't get a view range buff for all these vehicles, starting from tier 8, all of them has 390? Oh my lord, that is horseshit, <laughs> that is garbage. Yeah, 390 is pretty good for such a vehicle based on camouflage and sniping capabilities. But if you're focused on front lines, if you're focusing on getting a decent vehicle as well, I think this line is not bad. I would prefer this vehicle over the mill one when it comes to front line. But as for the high tier, the tier 10, uh, it's not bad. I mean, you could bounce a few shots. I haven't really tested out the turret armor. It's 100 millimeters well sloped, like very well sloped, but you still get artillery if you face artillery. But hey, that's such as life. But there you go, folks. The new UDS line with the UDS. 15 slash 16. I'll cover the new hidden vehicles tomorrow, but today I've been really tired. I slept like almost all day, half of the day. So, been really tired, but thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Peace. You'll know, you'll know.